So, have you ever wanted to build your own mobile app within your browser without having to set up a whole emulator using Expo or something else? Well, by the end of this video, you'll know if Google's new code editor, Project IDX, is worth your time or not. We're going to be building a Flutter app and test out all the features that Google has promised and see if this is all you need to make your own mobile apps. Before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out and ensures you won't miss any of the cool tools and tips we've got coming your way. All right, this is the main page of Project IDX. Let's go ahead and get started. First, click on Accept Terms and Conditions. Then, it will ask you to enable the AI features. Just continue with the basic steps it prompts. Once that's done, you'll be greeted by this interface. On the right, you'll notice some basic templates you can use to get started. You also have the option to import a GitHub repository and begin editing directly from there. For now, let's select a Flutter template to continue. Go ahead and name your app. I'll just call my new app just a standard name. After naming it, the environment setup will begin and everything will start loading. All right, here we are. The project is fully loaded. You can see that it provides us with a basic Flutter app template, complete with all the necessary files. The interface feels similar to VS Code, and it even includes a built-in terminal for convenience. Before we continue and actually test out the IDE, let's take a moment to explore some of the features it offers. First up, a pretty basic but handy one. You can work wherever you are by opening the IDE directly in your browser. This means you don't have to worry about system requirements. Now, as you can see, it also allows you to add the same extensions available in VS Code, so you're not missing out on anything. In fact, it provides additional extensions, just like VS Code. Moving on, Gemini is now integrated directly into Project IDX, introducing an AI component that wasn't previously included. You can simply start a chat with Gemini by continuing with the terms. Previously, the classic chat only allowed basic questions, but now this interactive chat brings advanced features. For instance, you can use tools like Cursor and WinServe to enter commands directly in the terminal, enabling multi-file editing and making code changes more intuitive. Additionally, as we saw earlier, Project IDX provides basic templates for your favorite frameworks. These include Next.js, Flutter, Python, Go, and Node.js. You can also import a repository you were previously working on, making it easy to pick up where you left off. Now, one of the standout features is the built-in emulator available right in your browser. This allows you to view and test the changes you're working on in real time. For example, with the basic Flutter template, it gives us a fully functional counter app. Switching to the Android version, you can see the app is operational and even lets you interact with the home screen. Another cool feature is that you can ask Gemini to run terminal commands for you. This makes tasks like installing packages much easier. For instance, as you can see here, it's asking for permission to run a command in the terminal. Once allowed, it executes the command and displays the results. If I resize the window, you can see it lists all the contents of my directory right here. So, without any further ado, let's dive into testing its capabilities. As I mentioned earlier, it comes with an interactive chat feature. We've already pasted a prompt here, asking it to create a mobile app for task management, Let's go ahead and submit the prompt. Now, since this process might take some time, let's speed it up. Once it's done, it presents us with the changes it has made and asks if we want to update the file. It also gives us the option to review these changes first. Let's review the changes. As you can see, the updates are displayed here. Now, let's go ahead and update the file. With the demo app loaded, we can see it has kept the same button design. Let's try adding a task. Upon clicking the button, a pop-up appears, allowing us to add a task. The task has been successfully added with a checkbox next to it. Let's add another task. That's added as well. When we click on a task, we can mark it as done, and then that removes it. I've now taken a prompt that introduces extensive changes, particularly to the UI. The goal here is to improve the interface, so I'll give it the prompt and it's going to start processing. It has made the changes and we can go ahead and review them before updating. However, I can already see there are some issues with the changes, but let's proceed and see if it works anyway. Let's refresh the app and try adding a task. Unfortunately, it's not working for some reason. So let's give it another prompt, pointing out that there are errors in the main file. 
Instead of directly identifying the problem, it's asking for relevant information, but not accessing the file itself. What I did was give it the entire code and it identified the part that was causing the issue. When I click this button right here to insert the fix, it simply inserted it wherever my cursor was positioned. It doesn't automatically determine where the code should be placed and insert it accordingly. This is a significant feature that it lacks when compared to cursor. When it provided the code snippet that needed to be changed, I told it to modify the entire file instead. It responded by giving me the complete updated file, which I copied and pasted. The interface has now changed, so let's test it. I'm clicking the button, but it doesn't seem to work. Oh, there it is, it just popped up. I guess it's a little slow. Let's go ahead and enter a task. However, the task doesn't seem to be added. I'll let it know about the problem I'm facing and see what kind of fix it proposes. It has given me a revised version of the relevant part of the code. Now let's try something different. I'll ask it to insert the code directly into the file and see if it does this automatically. Oh, it works. Now it's inserting the code where it needs to go. Let's go ahead and update the file. Honestly, this should be a built-in feature. I shouldn't have to ask it to insert the code. Let's test it again to see if the issue is resolved. Okay, the task entry menu is now showing up. Let's try adding a task. Still, the task doesn't appear to be added. Let's try prompting it again, but this time I'll be more specific, mentioning that the tasks aren't visible on the screen. It has proposed a fix. Let's review the changes and update the file. And now we can see the task we previously entered. It's working. Next, I asked it to implement an animation for marking tasks as done. It provided a fix, so let's review it. It seems to be adjusting the animation duration. Let's update it and see if it works. Unfortunately, it still doesn't. I'll prompt it again and hope for a better result this time. It does identify the issue, but it doesn't update the code itself. I had to manually guide it again, and it told me which file needed to be updated. Let's update the file and see if it works now. And yes, it's finally working. The animation is implemented. It took several attempts and repeated prompting, but we finally got it to work. Overall, Project IDX is an exciting step forward for browser-based app development. It's packed with useful features like built-in emulators and AI assistance from Gemini, making it super convenient and easy to use. That said, it's not quite perfect. Some limitations might make it less ideal for more complex projects. If you're into experimenting with new tools, it's definitely worth checking out, but it might not completely replace your go-to setup just yet. Well, that wraps it up for today. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep exploring.